Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week uh, with the Communist Party. Uh, before we get started, uh, I want to invite everybody who's watching to have a watch party. You can do that by clicking on the watch party uh, link at the bottom of uh, this uh, view screen. And you can invite your friends. So please uh, share the uh, wealth. <laughs> we are very happy to have um, Carol Ramos Widom with us. Uh, Carol is a um, activist from the uh, a great borough of uh, Brooklyn here in uh, New York City, uh, a retired teacher and has been active in the community for many, many years. Welcome, Carol. How are you? Hi, Joe. Thank you so much. I'm great this morning. Couldn't feel better. I heard that. And uh, <laughs> Scott, I like your hat. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's uh, uh, I'm outdoors, so I thought I'd allow myself to cover up my disheveled hair. And you can get away with it because you're outside. You know, you're yep. not supposed to wear a hat uh, unless you're, if you're inside. Unless, I guess, you're Jewish. And then if you're in the synagogue, you can get a hat over your head. So they say, well, it's been an eventful week. And I was very um, disappointed, even a little angry, when I heard uh, yesterday evening that the uh, Justice Department reinstated the death penalty for federal cases. Oh my God, can you imagine? This is the first time in like 16 years yeah. that uh, and there are a number of people on death row who, who will be uh, affected by it. The reason, anybody want to take a guess? Carol, Scott, why are they doing this now? Well, I mean, I think part of it is just, uh, it's sort of another one of these gratuitous gestures to reaction. like. You know, the abolishing the death penalty is something that has wide, wide support. And it's just another piece of, of meat tossed to the the most reactionary, the most violent forces in society. It's a uh, an appeal to racism, in other words. Is that what you're yes. trying to say? Huh? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's appeal to appeal to racism. It's appeal to um, like just violence and yeah. I mean, who's on death row, you know? I mean, Black, Puerto Rican, Mexican-American, men and women, the majority. And uh, this is this is an appeal to uh, Trump's, Trump's base. And, um, you know, it's an election campaign ploy, you know? And we, we have to keep in mind along with this that there, there have been a number of recent Supreme Court decisions that have... Um, uh, limited the rights of incarcerated people, um, even in state uh, death penalty cases. So attacks uh, on uh, the prohibition against cruel and unusual punishment, um, the uh, deregulation of, oh, so now um, uh, states aren't bound to, they, they can acquire whatever drugs they want for execution from wherever they want. So this is a so kill them any way you can. Any you way know, you can. I saw, any way you I, I saw it. I'm sorry. Finish your thought. You, no, no, it's just an attack on due process and and on the Bill of Rights. This administration has no respect for humanity. Not at the border. Not now. We see with this new uh, move, and with and we're going to talk about Puerto Rico with Hurricane Maria. At every turn, it's just catering to the worst reactionary elements and ideology and it's not it's not surprising it's not it's not really shocking coming from the trump administration which is sad because it kind of yeah. should be but it's kind of been normalized it happens every yeah. day you know, for the last 708 80 whatever days of this ad administration carol i heard a really interesting uh interview the other day um I forget the, this is this anti-racist activist uh, whose name is well known, but it escapes me. He was involved in the campaign to defeat uh, David uh, Duke in uh, Louisiana a number of times. And he talked about, he said that the central um, thrust of the Republican Trump campaign is racism. And that if the, if, if the opposition wants to win, it cannot ignore it. It has to run its campaign on anti-racism 
um, and and uh, the moral imperative of fighting it. You know, mm. what do you think about that? Is, right. is that a winning strategy? That's absolutely true. I think that's uh, that's what Trump is appealing to. That's what he's depending on, and and that's the whole idea of uh, we saw the with the uh, the uh, Supreme Court decision. Um, you know where they found th those uh, the, the the man who um, the map maker the gerrymanderer who passed away. Right. It was revealed how the whole purpose of of those schemes was to to um, decrease and to w eliminate the power of of um, as he said non his uh, uh, Hispanics increase non Hispanic white votes. And I mean, racist from top to bottom. There's no question about that. And that's what we have to fight. I think people's interests, you know, workers' self-interest will overcome when the truth comes out, will overcome racial influences and racial and racist appeals, uh, you know, that this administration is pushing. And that's certainly what, what Mark said. You know, he wrote in, in, in Capital uh, in the first volume, um, labor in the white skin, can never be free while labor in the black skin is branded, um, meaning that the the that the the fight against uh, racist oppression um, originally the fight for the abolition of slavery, but now the fight for for against racist oppression altogether um, is essential to the you know the the freedom the liberation of the working class as a whole, um, including white workers. Absolutely, and I think that in that respect that, you know, one would be smart to uh, kind of take a page from um, other, you know, winning campaigns and uh, strategies and that the fight against racism must be coupled with uh, programs like the Green New Deal, uh, national health care, single payer, um, and, and, and issues like that, that can help, you know, appeal to, which are in everyone's interest, you know? And, and so. yeah, to remind all working class people that it's not a competition between white workers and black workers, between non workers and immigrants, between um, uh, men and women. It's uh, the, the only uh, competition that matters is between the, the massive working class majority and the, the capitalist oligarchs that are um, yeah, you know, in fact, in fact, throughout the throughout the years, throughout the uh, the decades, all these all the struggles that supposedly you know were being carried out supposedly would mostly help minorities and uh, actually have turned out like open admissions. I remember when I was in college, open admissions really helped the middle class uh, people in the uh, in Brooklyn, Italian and Irish families. So these struggles, you know, are, are really for the benefit. This is the spin they try to put on things. But even immigration, the more we need more immigrants for the for the economy to thrive, for the money to move. Without that, we're headed in a, in a downward spiral. Absolutely. And the same thing can be true with respect to affirmative action, which benefited yeah. uh, uh, not only people of color, but also women. Yeah, I noticed uh, the New York Times published an article called um, uh, How the Soviet Union Won the Space Race for Equality um, about uh, women cosmonauts. Mm. Uh, and it sort of made me think of, I don't know if anyone remembers the movie Hidden Figures um, about the um, yes, uh, black women mathematicians yeah. at NASA. Uh, but there's this scene where the, you know, the head of the space shuttle program is, is having a meltdown about how the Soviets got to space first and I sort of wanted to leap into the movie and just be like yeah they made it first because they don't they didn't cut off you know 75 percent of their population from higher education by race by gender by socioeconomic status um equality helps us there as a society go. and yeah there you go and speaking of the fight for justice there was has been a huge movement um in the U.S. colony of Puerto Rico uh, over the last uh, few weeks, uh, uh, coming to a height this week, Carol, and um, you know, uh, toppling the uh, a governor. Uh, what were the roots of that uh, crisis, and and uh, you know, what do you think comes next? Well, you know what we're we're uh, calling it the the article in the paper in the People's World. 
was a people's impeachment, mm -hmm. a people's impeachment, not a legislative impeachment, which, which was already in the, you know, being worked on kind of behind doors. But the people said, we're not waiting. We're not waiting for the, uh, the, the Puerto Rico's Congress. We're not waiting for the United States Junta. We are taking the power that is rightfully ours. And they took it to the streets. And uh, it's, I, it's really been going, as you said, Joe, this discontent and these fights for, for, um, for economic equality, for, for social justice have been going on for decades. Uh, we have been um, also writing uh, in the recent past about the struggle of the teachers union, which is a, a leading union in the fight in Puerto Rico, the Federation of uh, the Federation of Teachers of Puerto Rico, taking it to the streets. And um, so this is, not, this is not new. This has been building up for decades. Um, and um, we see the power of three, three things uh, that are very powerful in Puerto Rican that I, I would like to point out in Puerto Rico in the society. One is the power of the labor movement, which mm -hmm. is very strong, very organized, in fact, when the streets were shut down and the highway, the main highway was paralyzed, it was the truckers that did that. They cut mm -hmm. off every avenue to San Juan and they were planning to have a general strike indefinitely mm -hmm. until the governor resigned. <laughs> the, other, the other element is the, the women. Ever since Hurricane Maria, it's been the women in, in the communities at the job site, among the pensioners and the health field, the women that kept um, that kept people alive, basically, with community, you know, just setting up tents and bringing in supplies and helping each other, you know, in that working class way. Um, that w the nurturing, uh, you know, um, the nurturing spirit of of women in general, but of Puerto Rican women, really saved lives mm -hmm. more than than Trump or the administration saved lives though they had a mandate to do it. They did not carry out that mandate. And the third element, uh, the labor unions, the women's movement in Puerto Rico, and the third one I would say is the youth. If you look at the demonstrations in the streets, um, these were the you know, people, some, te some teenagers, some in their 20s and their 30s. It was really intergenerational, but mm -hmm. I really always feel extra super inspired when I see the youth turn out in these massive numbers to take on, you know, carry on the torch. And now, um, you know, it's not ending there, of course. You know, this is uh, the, the banner that the teachers carried in these uh, demonstrations was resign, Ricky, and take the board with you. Llevate la junta, take them with you. So people are not gonna be satisfied with replacing, uh, substituting uh, Ricardo Rosselló with, uh, you know, another lackey of, of uh, colonialism. I there think was, that struggle has been advanced and heightened. Wonderful. That sounds uh, similar to what's happening in, in Chicago right now around the, uh, the teachers union and their contract fight. Um, the, the new mayor of Chicago was elected uh, largely on, on uh, promises to like change the old Rahm Emanuel uh, attack on the education system, replace it with something that, you know, met the needs of communities and, and teachers and, and, and neighborhood schools. Um, and so far, uh, that's not been reflected in, in the city's uh, contract proposals to the teachers. So uh, they, they also have slogans like, you know, we don't want to just, we don't want another Rahm Emanuel. We want, we need something different. Mm. Yeah, you know, what really strikes me also is the power of the working class even and working class consciousness, even where there isn't a strong organized union leadership. You know, we've seen these, these just uh, the power of workers just flare up and take over. And in a way, this also happened in Puerto Rico because some of the truckers were not in an organized bargaining units mm -hmm. of unions, but they saw their own, uh, their own power as workers. And, wow. and, and they acted on it. And like the teachers, the strikes in Arkansas and West Virginia of the teachers right. that just said, you know, we're doing this. We're not waiting for the leadership to, you know, call this or call that. We're just taking it in our own hands. 
It sounds like an, what we call an all people's movement led by labor, you know, uh, and women. <laughs> right. And uh, I have a friend uh, who lives in Puerto Rico and he sent me a note on Saturday night and said that uh, there was a huge crescendo of, of banging, 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 banging. People were, they, 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 they were banging pots. They were banging pots, you know, as a sign of protest against the uh, uh, governor. And this was a page taken from the Chilean revolution, if, if you remember, where the, the women went out and banging pots uh, against the government and, and uh, so on. Well, we have to say congratulations to the uh, Puerto Rican people. We want to encourage everybody to read Carol's uh, article in peoplesworld.org. Check it out. The uh, Communist Party will be issuing a, a statement uh, about it uh, in the next uh, day or so, probably later today. And uh, you can find that at cpusa.org. Is there anything that we can do, Carol, to, to help that movement? Well, I think here in, in, the, in the United States, I think we have to, uh, we, we cannot forget the, um, the history and the legacy of uh, uh, the history and of the relationship between the United States government, capitalism, colonialism, and Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. It would be a mistake to think that Yes, this is wonderful and it's elating and euphoric and historic, but let's not forget what has been at the roots of the misery that led to these revolts. You know, the, the austerity programs in Puerto Rico imposed by, uh, by Wall Street. Um, so I think we have to educate ourselves uh, and, the, um, and just let um, people, uh, uh, in every in every action that we take, make the connections the same ones we make here with our own struggles between finance capital and our economic problems and social problems and how it affects um, Puerto Rico. I think now I, I think it would help Puerto Rico as they go forward and they try to uh, you know take just uh, take off these shackles more and more and uh, and work toward uh, more self determination and you know who knows what steps. That's up to them. And now and also in November, they have elections coming up just as we do. So we're gonna have our own, uh, you know, uprising, flipping the Senate, getting rid of Trump. That'll be our, our uprising. And I think Puerto Rico is inspiring us to yeah. do that. And we can, you know, we can move ahead together. And speaking of which, we had the Mueller hearings uh, last week, I guess on, on Wednesday, Scott, um, weren't you um, uh, enthralled? Uh, did you did uh, did you watch? You know, I, um, I mostly just sort of perused the the various um, way it, uh, in which it was parsed in the in the mainstream media. You know, was it a a, a massive exoneration of Trump or victory for Trump, as the Republicans claim? Was it another like clear call to impeachment, as as some Democrats claim? Um, you know, I thought that the, what happened in, in Puerto Rico and, um, you know, Carol's article, a people's impeachment, really, that really threw things uh, into clarity for me. Like, um, impeachment is necessary, um, but Mueller's not going to save us. Uh, an investigation is not going to save us. Congress is not going to. This is the people are, this is the role of the people. Um, we need to be pushing organizing, demonstrating, um, like we can't just sit back and wait for, like people, I think people are waiting for some sort of smoking gun. Like if we just get enough people to talk in front of Congress, then something is gonna come out that'll be so outrageous, mm. you know, that we, uh, that, that Congress just has to uh, issue articles of impeachment. But I, I think, you know, it's already outrageous um, and, you know, it's it's going to be an organized push by by the whole people's movement that that makes it happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I got on the phone the day of the hearings, and I called my 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 congressman, uh, uh, Hakeem Jeffries, and um, and I um, I put it for I I told him I put it out there to move toward impeachment uh, proceedings. It has to be a people's movement, but these uh, Congress people have to be, you know, pushed also, keep the, 
the, uh, the their feet to the fire because they could be voted out too, okay. you know. Yep. So um, I, I, you know, uh, I just I told them I, I mentioned Puerto Rico and I mentioned uh, you know the the I'm a constituent and the neighborhood that I'm from how people are just fed up with Trump even the the people that voted for him there are changes taking place and we have a real chance to uh, to defeat the the ultra right wing in November. And uh, but they have to do their parts. I, I, I told them I voted for this congressperson. You know, I'm with them. I, I listened to their uh, their phone town halls. But they really have to uh, to move on this uh, in 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 a legislative way. Also, I think Mueller. I think it was laid out by Mueller. I mean, the question was that was put to him. I forget who it was, but the question was was there obstruction, not only collusion. But was there so much obstruction that you couldn't get, get to the collusion? And, and this is the point, you know? The, uh, so impeachment on the question of obstruction, impeachment on just the, the hate and the racism and the misogyny, and, the, and uh, it's just something that has to be brought to the fore, you know, as Scott, as you said, uh, by the people, by the masses of people, but also by the legislators. That's what they were voted they were voted in for to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think that that just about does it, folks. Uh, you have been watching uh, us at uh, this week at the Communist Party. Uh, we've been talking to uh, Carol uh, ramos Widom, a community activist from uh, Brooklyn, a, a retired uh, teacher um, who uh, spoke to us about the uh, struggle in uh, Puerto Rico and that tremendous, tremendous victory the other day, forcing the governor to resign. And we here in the United States can take a page from it. We need to get active in the campaigns at every single level uh, coming up on 2020, city council, state legislature, uh, con Congress, um, and the presidency, and listen to me, don't let nobody tell you that this is not revolutionary work. If you are a left-wing person, a socialist, communist, whatever you wanna call yourself, Democrat, left-wing, Democrat, whatever, this is revolutionary work, y'all. You gotta defeat these right-wingers, and we've gotta push for the leading role, uh, you know, huh? Re leading role of the labor movement in this fight. Um, and and the uh, people. Without that, we're going to be in real trouble. Joe, yeah. can, I, can I just throw in and end my part with the chant? El pueblo unido jamás no será, será vencido. vencido. That's El pueblo it. unido jamás será vencido. Thank El you. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Yeah, yes. Thank you, Carol. It's been a great program. We'll see everybody next week. Check us out at cpusa.org. Make sure you uh, visit our Facebook page. Um, and again, um, you all have a great weekend. Take care. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Scott. Bye, Bye Carol. Give me one of them hats, Scott. That's, that's <laughs> cool. Take care. Bye-bye.